Hello guys, today we are going to talk about orders and results. So any order that you will be placing in the system, if it's Cerner or Epic, you will start with placing the order in your system and that will generate an order message outbound. And the order message will be recognized as ORM 001 uh, segments in the message type. So all the order messages are ORM 001 and they will be going outbound to your vendor that will receive that order. The order could be a lab order, it could be an x-ray order, it could be another uh, type of orders, let's say a radiology order. And these orders has a common segments there which is the MSH segments, the PID segments, the PV1 segment, PV2 is an option, uh, ORC, OBR, and then there is the NTE segment, and then we have the OBX segments. The key segments in the order message is the OBR segment and the ORC, and more important is the OBR segment. The OBR segment has the order information, and it is very important to be correctly transmitted outbound uh, to make sure that the result will come correctly and match what you ordered. And the most important in the OBR segments is the OBR2, which is the placer order, and this is the order number from the Cerner system that will go outbound, and then the filler order number, and this is the order that is started on the site the, or, or the vendor that start the ordering process and in this case it's the med house type of system so this is the or, these order ids are the identifications that will be used to identify the result to make sure that it will match these orders and make it post successfully inside Cerner. so these two pieces of information are very important and it depends on how you uh, configure your system on the ESI part, you will pick one of these to be your uh, source of truth for the order matching. If you set up the orders to be matched on the Cerner side, then you have to follow the orders that come uh, from Cerner, which is this number right here. However, you can configure it both ways, so you can depend on the Filler number instead of the placer order depends on how your organization is set up. The second most important is the OBR15, which is the type, and then OBR27, which is the timing of this type of order. And then we have the NTE segments, which is identify um, what property that is going to perform this order. I, I mean by property, it could be the organization, or in this case, they are utilizing it for the bed number. So these are the most important information that you have in the order. And as you can see, the application here will highlight the segments for you, the start of the segments in a aqua color, and then the required field in red and the fields that are empty in yellow and these fields requirements are set up according to the Cerner specification for the inbound so whenever you are sending something to Cerner uh, for Cerner to process it it has to have these red fields as required fields and it should have values there and correct for format values so now let's look at the results and the results actually comes in different type of format and I will start with the dictated result. So the dictated result usually it's a result comes as a report in a flat file, an HL7 file and the results as you can see the message type is totally different. It will be the ORU R01 message type and that will identify it as a result. And as we said that the order ID and the OBR segment is the key to match the numbers that uh, you were ordered to get the result matching to the order that was placed for it to work successfully and post successfully inside the system. 
and the in this case a dictated result it's usually you can recognize it by having multiple objects start with one two three four five and it can go up to hundreds depends on how big the report is and that will tell me that this is a dictated type of report plus you will see some indicators and in the OBX segments if you scroll all the way to the end it will tell you what type of system that was sending and it depends in this case in my case it doesn't but usually in many cases it will tell you what type of system that is sending this and usually also you will find out the result if you want to know what system is sending you can see it here it's the DMS system this is the facility and the application that's sending it's the MDH7 which is depend on how you uh, put the aliasing for your system to be configured to accept these results from the contributor system that is sending this information so this is one type of result and as we can see here the key components or the key matching factors for the result to be posting successfully are the following first of all you need the order id to be correct in the obr segment this should match the order that was placed second you need the date and time to be in sequence which i mean by sequence is when you place the order let's say you place the order on the first of the month and then you receive the initial result on the second of the month on the third of the month you get the results so the date should be reflect this sequence of dates so the result should be the third of the month it should not be the first it should not be the second if this date and time doesn't have the right sequence it's not going to be posted successfully to Cerner the other piece of information that's key to have the result posted successfully is the OBR 25 which is the status of the report and as we said that the first time you place the order the system the vendor system will receive your order then will send you back something like initial report an empty report just to say that we received the order uh, so this status could be P could be I depends on how you configure it on your system as alias part on the Cerner side to go outbound so but for sure the final result it has to be F so if you are expecting on the third day to receive the final and you get another type of code which is PRI which is the initial or the preliminary type of result then that will not post successfully and I've seen this in my career uh, too many times that the vendor will send either the date or it will send the status not matching the sequence of events on the Cerner side and that will cause the report to not post successfully another type of result that we have is the URL result and the URL result it's actually a result that has been stored on the vendor side server so for you to for the clinical person to see this this type of result he has to navigate to the server of the vendor to look at this result and in this case as we can go ahead and see and the OBR Sigma we have the type of order we are placing is the echo diagram complete and this echo diagram complete has been transmitted back to us in a final status and the result values that we are looking for or the observation value that we are looking for it's actually a URL and if you click on that URL from your application certain application it will navigate you to the vendor server on their hosting server to that specific result and then it will show it to you on your system so this is another type of the result and it all the results has the same components it's the RC OBR OBX segments and for the OBX segment also to be correct it has to be OBX5 has the value OBX2 has the correct code or the correct alias for this 
type of value in this case rp is for the url and also the status should be final similar to the obr segment it should be final these two should match all the time so the obx 11 obr 25 should be the same all the time same for the obx 14 and obr 7 it has to be the same which is the date and time of the observation the last type of orders is the lab order and in this case the lab order is a little bit different because it has multiple obx's but each obx will respond to specific type of specimen or to specific type of information that should be transmitted back to us so in this case let's see the observation let's take one of the obx's as you can see here the obx segment one has the observation in three which is weight information and then you can see obx4 has obx5 has piece of information which is 29 and then the status f and then if you go to the next obx segments you will find a different type of information and so on so forth in each obx segment you will get pieces of the information that you are looking for and for example here it's, it's a calcium phosphate and it will give you the value of that type of test and that's what makes the result from lab different which has like multiple object segments and in each segment will be a response to type of order or type of chemical information or type of piece of order information that was placed but all of these order messages has the same key components same key segments and the certain side will look to the same key fields to populate the information correctly on Cerner and these fields are for the OBR segments the OBR3 usually and OBR7 for the date and time and OBR25 for the status and for the OBX side it will be OBX5 for the value and OBX11 for the status and then OBX2 for the type of uh, observation that was transmitted that's all for orders and results for this day i ha i hope that you enjoy this type of information and i hope it will be useful for you and your career please feel free to comment or share this video to expand the knowledge and to share it with everybody else and feel free to look to my holy 7 application and try to purchase it it's only 199 it's really cheap as if you are spending nothing thank you very much and until the next video